Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my Robin Hood portfolio. Hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome holiday weekend. As you guys know, tomorrow, 2017. So hopefully you guys have some plans to have a little bit of fun tonight for New Year's. What I thought I would do today is kind of recap the amount of dividends that my portfolio has produced up till this point. As you guys know, I started my portfolio a few months ago. You can see on the bottom there, June 29th, I put $200 in. It actually cuts off another deposit, but essentially around the end of July, I put in about $3,000. And from that time until today, I've made quite a few uh, dollars on dividends. You know, I haven't made thousands of dollars, but I've made enough to have a little bit of a return with my portfolio. As you guys know, my portfolio is essentially a high dividend yielding portfolio. I like investing in large market capitalization companies, those companies that have over $5 billion of total net worth, as well as blue chip companies, companies that are very well known, stalwarts of their particular industries, household names, and they also need to have a high dividend. And by high dividend, I mean in the 25 to 5% range or so. Um, there are a lot of companies out there that have higher dividends, but Unfortunately, those companies are very, very risky plays. A lot of the business development companies uh, like the PSEX, uh, the Guttenheim funds, Prospect Capital funds, they have very, very nice dividend yields of you know, anywhere from 9% all the way up to 13%. But unfortunately, as you can imagine, a company just can't you know, uh, tolerate those kinds of yields long term. Uh, just too much of a drag on the business. And because of that, those companies are typically very, very volatile. The price goes up and down uh, very rapidly. And they're really not very good uh, long-term investments. Uh, I think it's much better uh, for a buy and hold strategy with a little bit of stay and swing trading on the sides when the opportunity presents itself. But, you know, these business development companies and other funds, uh, real, real estate investment trusts also have uh, some very nice yields as well. But again, they're a little bit risky. Uh, anything above 10%, I probably wouldn't put a lot of capital in. I do have a few of those stacks in my portfolio. They performed okay for me so far, but again, it's more of a curiosity thing in my portfolio. I don't have a lot of capital invested in those companies, uh, but what I do have is a lot of large market cap, blue chip, high dividend yielding companies. Again, companies with a dividend around you know two two and a half percent or so up to 5%. A lot of these companies are 3 to 4% actually. So having said all of that, you know, my portfolio, I now have about $30,000 or so in the account. And since July, again, I've been dollar cost averaging up, so I didn't start with 30000 I started with 3000 and then have uh, been adding to my portfolio as well as making some gains. So I'm currently at 30000 And from, as, as you saw on that prior slide, uh, from June 29th until now, I've made about 300 or so dollars in dividends. So we're not talking about thousands of dollars per month. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. Uh, I know there's a few that think uh, that's feasible, but that really isn't feasible unless you have you know millions of dollars in your account. Uh, otherwise, you're investing in very high-risk companies that really have the potential of going bankrupt and losing a lot of money from uh, capital depreciation. So uh, this is a rundown of all my dividends. I'll just kind of scroll through. You can see the first dividend there was on August 31st. As you can see, I have a dividend every few days or so. And a lot of these numbers are small. Like I said, when I started my portfolio, I only put $3,000 in. I only have a few shares of each of these stocks. And as I scroll up, you can see some of these will start to rise as I put more money in. For example, T in the middle there, AT&T, $9.60. Uh, they have about a 4 to 5% dividend yield. So that represents a quite, uh, uh, quite a bit of capital in that particular company. PHK as well. So that's one of those business development companies I was talking about. Very good dividend there. Uh, with not a lot of money, I think I only had a, a couple thousand dollars invested in PHK at that time. Uh, maybe a little bit less actually. So $28 a month, that's a lot for only a couple thousand dollars invested. However, that stock, you know, in, essentially in a couple weeks dropped 15% and uh, really hasn't recovered. So a very high risk. Uh, high risk play there. I don't really recommend having a lot of capital in these kinds of companies. Uh, PTY is another one of those companies. Again, I don't have a lot of capital in that, so there's only a 13 cent dividend. And as I go up, you can see Avvi, uh, Abbott Laboratories, pharmaceutical companies, healthcare stocks. Uh, you can see a little bit better dividend as I put more money into those stocks. 
But again, most of these names you see here are high cap, blue chip, high dividend yielding stocks. So very, very good stocks. And you see I don't have a lot of dividends coming back with regards to uh, dollars. You know, these aren't, you know, $10 a month stocks. Um, and again, these are some more scheduled ones here all the way through September uh, up until December here, as you can actually starting August 31st. So the, the last part of August, I got my first dividend. You can see these aren't substantial dividends, but they're from very reliable companies. I can essentially forget about these stocks for 10 years and be very confident when I reopen the portfolio that I'll have not only market capitalization, but a very good return from dividends as well. So yeah, that's a run through of all my dividends that I have received so far since opening the portfolio. So I think this is uh, a reasonable return, anywhere from 3 to 5%. You can also throw in some higher yielding business development companies, some of those closed in funds that have a little bit higher return, as well as some real, st real estate investment trusts, excuse me, that also you know return in the 6 to 9% range. So I think that's a very healthy portfolio, a nice little return here. Overall, I think I'm getting about 4% or so with my dividends. So yeah, that's a little bit of a review so far with my dividends. Uh, obviously, as I continue to put more money in, as I make a little bit with capital appreciation, these dividends will go up. And at some point in the future, I'll be making you know a nice little return per month, which I can put back into the portfolio, um, compound interest, or you know use some of that money for... Uh, other purposes. So again, just a little bit of a, of a review over my dividends here since opening the account represents about, you know, since uh, July or so, July, August, September, October, November, December, about six months or so of dividends. You know, starting off with a little bit of money in my portfolio, now moving up to about 30000 I'll continue dollar cost averaging. These stocks will continue to produce dividends, capital appreciation. They're very long-term stocks that can hold forever. And, uh, don't really need to worry about uh, the volatility in some of the higher. So, again, just wanted to talk a little bit about my dividends here. I'll let me know how you guys have uh, been managing your dividends, how what kind of return you guys have been getting. Uh, are you like me going for stable companies with high dividend yields, or are you kind of playing the more risky side of things and going into business development companies and some of the other closed-in funds that have you know 10 plus percent returns? Uh, either way, it's a very interesting way to uh, play the dividend game here. So with that, I'll kind of end the video without making this too long here. As always, if you enjoy my videos, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Having a ton of fun putting out these videos, learning a ton. Hopefully you guys have learned a little bit as well. Any advice for me, let me know. Any good stock picks uh, for the uh, beginning of next year, let me know as well. I'm going to start diving in and taking a look at some new stocks to add to the portfolio. So until next year, guys, we'll see you then.